This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. Hello, Judge. Yeah. Yeah, I want to ask you, man. Got a couple of points you made. Um, you know, Wednesday will mark the uh, actual bicentennial of Memphis founding. Memphis's birthday will be on uh, Wednesday, May 22nd, 200 years in. Uh, what are your thoughts about, you know, who are some that, in your opinion, some of the most important events in Memphis history or some of the most important people we should know? Doc Harrington got elected. H.T. Lockett filed a series of lawsuits that got University of Memphis desegregated, the high schools desegregated, the junior highs desegregated, the elementary schools desegregated, the park facilities desegregated. That's the late Judge H.T. Lockett. It's when A.W. Willis and Russell Sugarman, both late, they were attorneys. They got qualified to set up and have some influence in local elected offices. When Ben Hooks got uh, pushed by H.T. Lockett and became the first black judge in the area since Reconstruction. So, yeah, there are a lot of things that come along like that. Those are the ones, the two I would say are most important. Harrington getting the first black elected mayor, five times elected, and H.T. Lockett filing those desegregation lawsuits. So it's like now we're uh, approaching, I believe, June the 8th, we're talking about the uh, People's Convention. That, you know, that yeah, that's we need time. it because right now, Memphis looks like a plantation. White people are only 19.1% of the registered voters in Memphis, but yet they are controlling everything. And we've got a bunch of damn fool colored folk off a plantation who insist on jumping three, four, five, six at a time in a race, dividing the vote so somebody white like this clown Strickland can become mayor. Strickland is incompetent. And Memphis 3.0 is a ridiculous ripoff that they're setting aside to try and exploit black folk and take advantage of our reduced economic situation. There's plenty of money, but it does stuff like $42 million for this new movie theater downtown, which the city paid for, which private enterprises and private enterprise, if the governmental entity is financing it, like that $35 million thing down there, the uh, Beale Street Landing that they built for this guy to operate the gift shop, bar, and grill, and a giant catfish out there. And the deal is, if they build the stuff for you, you get to run it. You give them 4% of your net profit, if any. If not, you nothing. And $1 cash rent up the front for the year. Now, all that money could have been spent on developing black enterprise. And there are a lot, there's a lot more than that. That corner, it used to be over there in the 80s when you went over the A.W. Willis Bridge to the Mud Island Housing Development. There was a right angle corner in the stop sign to show you about the corruption. The city of Memphis sold that stop sign, that corner, to a developer for $14,600. And less than 90 days later, he sold it back to the city for $6.8 million. That was a ripoff. Another ripoff is selling that park down there in front of that uh, that uh, medical center complex with Nathan Bedford Forrest's statue on it to somebody on the county commission. I won't mention his name at the moment for twenty five hundred dollars, and then selling the same person who's on the county commission. Uh, that park down here on the bluff where they had Jeff Davis's statue for two hundred twenty five hundred dollars and the property is worth somewhere the two combined is worth somewhere between twenty and twenty five million dollars and he got it for five thousand. Hell I'd have written a check. Mm. But see there was no bid. But see that's the kind of corruption that goes on. Yeah, because my understanding uh talking to people tonight 
they were saying that the Bill Street landing thing is falling apart, like it needs repair. Like yeah. they did a shoddy job of building it. And you said it cost what, $35 million? Yeah. How <laughs> much, how many black entrepreneurs could have been helped to get a business going with $35 million of taxpayers' money? Yeah, but like we get back to what our earlier conversation is all about real estate and construction down here. Like the people, yeah. that, like the Turleys and stuff like that. Memphis. Yeah. Big money in Memphis has six things, but only five of them are of immediate concern. That's real estate estate acquisition, management, and development, construction, and construction material supply. The thing is, is getting hold of some properties that you have connived to get cheaply. You develop and manage them and what you do is you then go down and bribe some of the city council members which happens all the time until they grant a zoning variance and i tell you every single damn zoning variance that has been granted by the city council for 35 years that i can go back hell i know is subject to corruption and bribery and they used to cover it by cracking down on adult entertainment. Now they just do it more quietly and don't say anything, and they all get paid off for doing it. I'll tell you about that in a second. But see, when they do that, that destroys any coherent city planning. It disrupts neighborhoods where you have some gentrified, and then you have an overflow. So what do you do with that? You go take a settled but decent neighborhood and you break that up, put the low and moderate income and Section 8 housing in that area or close to it. The crime rate goes up astronomically. That screws that neighborhood and everybody moves out from that. So you Mm -hmm. get people displaced by gentrification. And then 20 years later, you do more gentrification and move them out and you keep exploiting it. And instead of somebody sitting down and making a coherent city development plan and sticking to it, you have these zoning variances so people can do it. And the way they bribe these people down on the city council, is many of them, and on the county commission at one time, are deacons or officials in a church. So what happens is on pastor's appreciation day, there's a large anonymous envelope full of cash that's addressed to deacon or elder or whatever it may be so-and-so uh not elder that's church of god and christ for preacher but you Mm -hmm. know somebody in the church and that's their bribe and payoff or you have a business so you get a big order for your product and a check for it from the city but you don't have to deliver anything that's your payoff Hmm. like our county mayor Mm -hmm. Yeah, and see, the immorality thing, it is encouraged for lawyers to do pro bono work. In other words, free work for things that are really important, constitutional matters and such. Mm-hmm. So we've got the current mayor, he and his county mayor, he and his wife were law professors, so they had jobs and paychecks, and those bastards didn't do one damn pro bono case between them in the 10 or 12 years They've been out here at the University of Memphis Law School. (laughs) And you elect somebody whose whole history in government is pushing LGBT stuff, and that's who you elect. He doesn't have an agenda for us. We get nothing out of it. You got this little young lesbian girl running for mayor here. That's her business, but she doesn't have a program, and all she's saying is it's time for a change, and when I get in, I will discover what needs to be done. Oh, hell. <laughs> Trying to emulate what happened in Chicago, which, by the way, that thing about electing that black lesbian in Chicago, that was the lowest voting turnout in 70 years for a mayor's race. Mm-hmm. Run off or otherwise. They have almost 6 million registered voters in the Chicago area in less Somewhere around 400 plus thousand turned out to vote. Wow. But you but still, you still need that ballot turned out in mass. Well, yeah, she still had access to the black vote they turned out for her, too, for that, you know, Lori Lightfoot. Yeah, it was a black female, uh, it was a black 
lesbian. <laughs> and her opponent was a black female Democratic Party activist. In other words, everybody says, the hell, there's nobody running. But the gay community turned out in mass to lend their support to their member, and she got elected. That's political power. That's their right. or power to them. Yeah, but my, somebody's my, trying to do that here, and then the thing again, you got this ass down there. Strickland is in the mayor's office. He needs to be turned out. He's incompetent. It is not representative of the city. But yet, you got all these folks that want to dive in the mayor's race. So Doc Harrington said he's got getting in, got in because he said only I can narrow and winnow this stuff out, win this race at least for one term, to straighten out this corruption and stupidity. I mean, but he Nobody. had five terms, though, to do that, I thought. He had five well, terms. he did. Mm -hmm. I mean, and when Doc was in, the streets were fixed. There weren't potholes. AC got in and potholes. Franklin <laughs> got in and there craters in the damn streets. When AC got in, you know, he inherited a situation where Doc left it where if you're the director of police and their cops to get out of line with anything questionable and you have dealt with it, then you get dealt with. You'll find you're fired by the time you get home. You'll read about it or you will hear about it or look at it on television. And he straightened it up. And I saw some stuff toward the end of his uh, service where little old ladies had trays with coffee and donuts on it and then meet the cops out at the stop sign and give it to them, say, hi, how are you? The mm. police community relations were improved. It's like, what's that Clint Eastwood movie where he was the drill, well, the gunny sergeant or the recon platoon for the Marines, uh, Port Shop Hill or something like mm -hmm. that? Uh, their problem as a unit is they lack leadership and their morale was shit. So Clint Eastwood came in and exercised efficient leadership. The morale improved. They got a purpose and they got direction and they became a crack unit. That's what was happening with the Memphis Police Department. The mayor was saying, Director, you sit at my pleasure. You won't be sitting if I get displeased, so make sure damn sure I don't get displeased. So the police were held in check and account. Blaze, he got in, tried to please everybody. I know him, a friend of mine, but... It doesn't work that way. You got to, what is it? You want to make an omelet? You got to crack some eggs. Mm. So he didn't. Well, and well, the well, police well. and the firemen and the sanitation workers and all the city workers are real upset because their pension plan went to hell. But the money that was supposed to go to the pension plan went to pay for that building that the city gave uh, an airline that hadn't even incorporated it was supposed to come here that didn't that was 28 million there was that money spent for the theater in the peabody that was 30 some million there was the 35 million for that peabody i mean that beale street landing there was the 85 million dollar pyramid that they gave away to bass pro for nothing one dollar a month a year so they can hire 126 employees, and they've got the worst equal employment record in the company, one, or country, one of the worst. And if you go out to their center on Sycamore on I-40, they've got exactly two employees out there. One's a janitor, and the other one's the maid. Like, how can you do that? I mean, who, how can these people, I don't know who's running there. There's I mean, some crooked folk. Harold <laughs> Collins is a crook. Like, how can you live with yourself? Okay. They indicted. See, Harold Collins got indicted along with a preacher in Mississippi Boulevard for stealing millions of dollars of money. The civil case got dismissed because the money was in some, allegedly in some unknown country in Africa. Okay. And they would not be able to prove their case. And Amy Wyrick, with her crooked behind, did not prosecute her driving Miss Daisy driver, Harold Collins, who drives for her. Mm. And there's another crooked thing. They've got do the right thing, W-R-I-T-E, which is supposed to be a black-oriented program. 
So Harold Collins got the money through the city to fund the damn thing, and he makes Amy Wyrick the acting director. Wow. And by the way, Amy Wyrick has a unique distinction. Uh, several law reviews at major law schools and some other people writing books researching the subject note that she personally has had more findings against her of prosecutorial misconduct than any DA's office in the country collectively has had over a 50-year period. Another thing, the Department of Justice notes that whereas the arrest for simple possession of marijuana in Memphis run about equal between whites and blacks, 95% of the people that wind up getting found guilty or plead guilty are black. And guess what? They get the stiffest sentence for simple possession of marijuana in the entirety of the United States of America. This juvenile court we've got down here with these jerk clowns, these kangaroos, have been administering maljustice for years. And the Justice Department calls them the most racist and corrupt organization and entity they've ever investigated, ever, mm -hmm. in the whole country. And they're still operating la da da skimming money and putting it into a sequestered bank account that used to be worked through First Tennessee. And right. a number of people have been using public funds for collateral and security for home loans, car loans, personal finance, and now for mass campaign loans, for campaign financing. And nobody's gone to jail. We had a colored U.S. attorney who was trying to get a job, permanent lifetime job as a federal judge, he abstained from prosecuting all of these people that should have been prosecuted when he was in under Obama Tang, another <laughs> sorry, useless somebody who is not one of us, richest person ever to sit in the White House, and not Trump, is Obama. And he did nothing, and he, on the promise that he would be made a federal judge, he wasted his whole tenure in office as U.S. attorney, did nothing, and then as soon as Trump got elected, within several weeks they had withdrawn him in his name and had some white guy approved, a nondescript, no, not nothing down there, with due respect, I guess I should say, even though I'm not practicing anymore, and my law license is in a medical disability condition, and thankfully it is because you have no idea how many complaints I get for talking about these folk. But they can't do anything because my license is in that state. Now somebody Here told me work. about that, that, that black uh, lawyer who wanted to be a federal judge. Somebody told me he'll, he'll be a great candidate for mayor of Memphis. Yeah. Shit. 